I would love to have your support. So please hit subscribe and hit that bell icon so you don't miss any new content. Let's start off by looking at the anatomic regions of the ear. First, we have the external ear, then we have the middle ear, and then the inner ear. The structures of the external ear include the pinna, or the auricle, the external acoustic meatus, or external auditory meatus, you may also see the external auditory canal, and then the tympanic membrane, which is commonly known as the eardrum. Moving on to the middle ear, um, I'd like to point out this tube first. This is called the pharyngotympanic tube, or uh, the eustachian tube, or also the auditory tube. But I highly recommend that you learn pharyngotympanic tube because it's very descriptive of what it connects. This tube will actually open up into our nasopharynx, and it's normally closed except when we open our mouths to chew or to swallow or to yawn, things like that. And the purpose of this tube is to help equalize the pressure on either side of the tympanic membrane. Um, so if we ever have kind of pressure built up here, what do you normally do? You yawn or you chew gum, and what that does is that opens up this tube and that again connects to the nasopharynx and allows that pressure to equalize. Additionally, if germs travel up this tube, they can cause a middle ear infection, or we call that otitis media. Um, this is more common in children because their pharyngotympanic tubes are shorter and more horizontal, whereas um, adults are longer and more vertical. Additionally, within the middle ear, we have these three auditory ossicles, and these are the tiniest bones we have in the body, which is kind of cool to think about. And those ossicles are going to be the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. Here I have a large model of the bony labyrinth. Recall that the bony labyrinth is a series of spaces and uh, this structure is covered by periosteum. And inside of the spaces, we have a membranous labyrinth. That membranous labyrinth is filled with fluid on the inside, and then we have fluid on the outside of that labyrinth as well. So this structure right here, that is the cochlea. And then right here, we have the vestibule. And then over here, we have the semicircular ducts. Within the vestibule, we have two membranous structures called the saccule, which is closer to the cochlea, and the utricle, which is closer to the semicircular ducts. Inside of these structures, we have otoliths that help um, our head detect static equilibrium and linear acceleration. Then over here in the semicircular ducts, um, we'll have sensory receptors that help detect angular acceleration. And then at the base, we have these bottle-shaped structures called ampulla, and that's a term that you'll see in other chapters as well. It just kind of describes this, this bulging area right here. Um, we have structures that will help our head detect rotational movement. All right, so now let's kind of tie these structures in together by following a sound wave. So a sound wave is going to come in, it will pass uh, the pinna, and then go through the external acoustic meatus. That sound wave will hit that tympanic membrane, and the vibration will go along the auditory ossicles, the malleus, the incus, and the stapes. That vibration then gets amplified by the stapes via the oval window, into the fluid inside the inner ear. Okay, so let's take a closer look at what happens when the stapes vibrates. Um, remember that the stapes is covering the oval window, and the oval window is going to lead into this area right here, and that sound wave is going to come in through an area called the scala vestibuli, which is filled with perilymph. From the scala vestibuli, or the vestibular duct, that will vibrate the uh, vestibular membrane, 
and then from the vestibular membrane that fluid wave will go um, into the cochlear duct or the scala media from there it will vibrate the basilar membrane and that basilar membrane is what is attached to um, the hair cells that will eventually transmit that signal within the organ of corti or the spiral organ to the vestibulocochlear nerve, the cochlear branch specifically because that is what is connected to this area. Um, any other sound waves in that area can then go into the scala tympani or the tympanic duct and then whatever is left over will get absorbed in this area and this round window is what bulges so that is how the oval window and the round window are related to sound my big tips for learning the anatomy of the ear are to start with those anatomic regions and then at the very end just like we did in this video follow a sound wave through it'll teach you the order and then you will also review a lot of the structures that we covered here today so i hope this video helps let me know in the comments what you thought and i'll see you guys in the next video take care